Good morning, everyone. My name is David, for those that don't know me. I'm a product of Jesus Christ. Been redeemed, cleansed, and healed. And I came through the school of total freedom. I was called to total freedom many years ago. A place that I didn't know nothing about. But God showed me before my time, and he directed me. And if I knew what I had known now, I probably would have run. <laughs> thank God that I don't know everything. And thank God he knows everything. And he knows what's best for me. Because if I did things according to my will, I would have been dead by now. I know I would not see another day. I was a victim of drugs and alcohol for over 25 years. I had a life of destruction. I destroyed other people's lives as my life was being destroyed. I allowed Satan to take my son and put him in life for prison, for, for life. And I seen God redeem that and turn that thing around and set him free. So whenever the, Satan has a plan, God has another plan. He has a better plan. I've seen separation of my children and everything that I destroyed and seen God bring it back together. But I had to wait for him. I couldn't do it according to my time and the way that I want to see it fit. I had to wait and trust him. You know what trusting means? Patience, perseverance, trials, tribulation, endurance. Even when it don't feel good. Because if it feels good, anybody could do it. And that's just the will of Satan. Do what thy will. That's the law of Satan. But God has another law. A law that shows us that we have to have boundaries to stay in the place that he set forth to keep us free. Because if we step over those boundaries, guess what? We're back in captivity and we don't even know it. Because deception is a pretty place that Satan likes to paint a picture to. He knows how to do it well, because he's been deceiving the world for since we've been on this planet. And he's doing a good job of it. Many of people are going to hell that's going to church. I hate to tell you that. They go to church because they want to make themselves feel good, but they reject the word of God that's spoken through his prophets, his teachers, his apostles, his evangelists. They reject the word, and they still do what they will and not even realize that they're following a voice of destruction. Amen. Everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. We're going to... Hallelujah. I didn't even mean to come that way, but the Lord says that we have, knowing that the time is at hand. we knowing that the time is at hand. A lot of people don't realize what time it is. How close we are to the end. We are very close to an ending of this age of grace. And a lot of people are asleep, not knowing what's really going on around them because other voices are controlling them now. And the bad thing is people that know the truth are not even using the truth to fight, to stand for their freedom. But they allow, the worst thing to do is knowing the truth and make other people fall in your truth which brings a flawed belief system because your truth don't match up to his truth, then it's not truth. It becomes a lie. Even though it feels like it's good because it makes you feel good, but you got to understand, there's a demon there. There's a demon there. Okay, let's go to Romans 13. Romans 13. Let's see what God has to say today. How many times you have to repent when you're getting taught? <laughs> huh? When you start seeing stuff about you, and you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Have mercy, Lord. <laughs> See, first of all, you got to start examining yourself before you start giving it to other people. Because you got to understand something. Each and every person in here are required to be teachers. And, it's, and the judgment on us is more stricter than anyone else. Because we know the truth, and we tell other people about the truth, but we're not practicing the truth. We're the deceptor bringing deceiving words to other people because it's not from the heart. It comes from the head. 
And that's called Gnosticism. And that's what the world teaches is knowledge from the head, not from the heart. Because they're not practicing what they're being taught. Gnosticism is nothing but new age. It's a new age movement. They talk about everything they know, but not talking about who they know. Amen? Amen. Everybody okay? So this thing is going to be kind of tough. I hope nobody runs out the door or throws stones at me at the end. <laughs> you know how people do. <laughs> Amen. Or get me, I know I'm going to get dirty looks, but that's okay. You got to understand, I had, I've been at Total Freedom for a while, and I had sometimes had to stand by myself while other people were falling away because I was not going to allow myself to follow their falling away because I could go to hell by myself. I don't need nobody else's help. Amen. Amen? I don't need nobody else to, to follow your sin to go to hell. I should know how to do the right way by being taught by the teachings that we're taught here. How many of y'all been taught by Pastor Guy's teaching through the Holy Spirit? How many of y'all know Pastor Guy and knowing that um, he's a man that follows truth? Amen. Especially when he don't feel like he, he's following truth because he's not accepting your sin. Or how you think. Or how you think that he should be walking your way, not his way. Hmm? How many of us go to the council for him, but we already got our minds made up what we're going to do already? Amen. And not proceeding knowing that the council is coming from the Lord. How many of y'all know that he hears from the Lord? Amen. But I, I got another question. He only hears from the Lord when it touches and agrees with you? <laughs> or does he hear from the Lord when it don't touch and agree with you? You got to understand something. The Lord is not going to do things your way. Because we're not God. He's God. Amen. And we need to find out where he's at so we can get home. How many of y'all want to get home? Amen. Okay, we're going to find out in this teaching. All right? Romans 13, 9. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. Stealing don't mean just finances. Stealing means stealing time from God. St excuse me. Stealing time when he's asking you to do something and you choose to do something different. That's stealing too. It's not only about finance. A lot of people think it's just about money. No. Stealing means whatever God is asking you to do and you're taking it and doing something else. You're stealing from him. Because he gave you the truth. Now you're taking it and, and surrendered for a lie. You shall not bear false witness. Oh. You shall not covet. If there is any other commandments are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now is, is high time to awake. Out of sleep. A lot of people are sleeping. It's time to awake out of sleep. Hmm. Do you know? Huh, yeah. Do you know there's a lot of people when, you, when you're asleep? I mean, sleep is comfortable. Come on, you know, when you're sleeping, you get in there, the AC's right, and you're underneath the blanket, and you're, and you're in it. You know, you know, some people snore like I do. And then you get that nudge, wake up! Oh, I'm sorry. Was I snoring? Yeah. How about you, are you sleeping so good you snore and wake yourself up? <laughs> that one. <laughs> and, you know, when people are comfortable in sleep, and you nudge them, and you say, get up, it's time to get up. And, and they swing at you, leave me alone! I'm asleep! They're comfortable. They don't want to be bothered. Or you got somebody that's sleepwalking. They say it's dangerous to wake somebody up sleepwalking because they're led by a spirit walking on earth. So, you know, when you, it's like sleeping people like to hang around sleeping people. Amen. They, talk, they talk different stuff that's not godly. They walk ungodly ways and everything. But when they hang around an awake person, they can't stand being around that person. Because that person is awake about the reality of what things are really happening. 
They're awake about what's, what time it is and how important it is to keep your soul right. They can't, and, and the sleeping person will shun away from that person. A lot of the times they're angry at that person because they're talking truth. And don't even know that that person is concerned about their soul, even though they're not concerned about their own soul because they're asleep. They're, they're, in a, they're in a daze. You know, people can watch TV for hours and be watching TV and don't even know they're hypnotized to what they're watching to. And they're sleeping and they don't even know they're awake while they're being asleep. But as soon as they pick up the Bible, they fall asleep. <laughs> because, they're, because the bad part of it is that their brain is not trained to concentrate on the Word of God. It's not trained. Because we have to learn how to be disciplined in the things that we don't want to do. There's a lot of things we don't want to do and Christ is calling us to do. But we have to discipline ourselves to be in that manner, to be willing to do yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord. I know I don't feel like doing it sometimes. Man, sometimes God, pastor calls me up and tells me I got to do this. I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing this, but okay, Lord. But I don't feel like doing it, but okay, Lord. And sometimes he sent me to do a job and I struggle and I get there and I mumble. Yeah, I mumble and complain sometimes. I know we all do, don't we? Or, or I'm the only one. <laughs> we get caught up in that flesh because that flesh doesn't want to do the will of God. And then after a while, I'll just surrender to it and let it go and do what God asks me to do. And then as soon as I do all that, then God let, release, the, release the job from me. I said, man, if I knew that, I would have did that a long time ago. <laughs> But that was training. It was training to show you, are you willing to do what I'm asking you to do? Are, are you willing to do what you want to do? Let's go and move on. Because this is what people are doing. They're sleeping. It says here, I'll do it again. Let's start at 11 again. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now salvation is nearer than when we first believed. So that means when we first believed, that means we should both be going deeper now, not going backwards. That means we should not be backsliding into the, our old ways, Amen. but we should be going deeper into the things of, of God to re receive his promises. How are you going to receive his promises if you don't believe what he, his words speak? His word, his word tells us where the promises are, are at and, and what we're supposed to do. But the only way you get to the word of it is by the action that you do to get the promise. The word shows you but your action receives the promise. Because we got, remember it says, don't just be hearers of the word, but, we, but what? Be doers of it. Because when you do it, you receive the promise. Because now you're walking to victory. It says, the, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly on in the day, not in rivalry and drunkenness. You, let me stop that. It says let us walk properly as in the day because the only time that we can work is during the day because when the night comes, no man is going to work no more. That's when everything ends. You don't know when the night's going to come into your life when your end's going to happen. Everybody's waiting for it. Oh, I'm going to wait till the Lord comes. Or, but we don't know when death is going to come. Because every day is not promised to us. I've been in this ministry for a while, and I have seen people die at this ministry. And that time ended. And it was doing the right things, but God called them. It was time for them to go home. Maybe because God interrupted for them because he knew that if they kept continuing, they wasn't going to make it home. So he had to place it where he had to put something in them so that they could look upon him so he can reach down to them and say, come on home, I got you now. So we have to do it while it's day. Every day is a day. Every day is a new experience for me. You got to understand, I've been saved for so many years, but the thing is, every day is a new adventure to me because every day is different from the yesterdays because I know there's different traps this day than there was yesterday. There's different things that's happening that I'm not aware of, so I have to keep my trust and my hope in him, no matter how I feel, no matter how it looks, 
because I can't go by my feelings because my feelings lies to me every day. Because they want, my feelings want me to be this, the desires of this flesh. And the flesh lies to me. And it has a strong voice too. I don't know about you, but my flesh has a strong voice. You know, very strong. Because you got to understand the things that I dwelt in, they're still trying to call back and I say no to it. Because it has no power over me because the voice has gotten dimper because I've released, been released from it. But it's a choice away for me to accept it again. Let's go back to 13. It says, let us walk properly in the day, not robbery and drunkenness, hmm. not in lewdness and lust, not in strife, not in strife, Amen. not in strife, or envy. Christians like to walk in strife sometimes because they see things other people are doing and they're mad because they can't do it themselves. <laughs> Being honest. <laughs> Being honest. How come they get away with it and I can't? <laughs> Pray for them, brother. That don't mean you have to follow it. Pray for them. Yeah, you know what the ending of that product is. Those who are awake, you feel sorry for them because they, you know that they're asleep and they're not. Something lulled them, fanned them right back to the blindness once they once was open to. And now they're falling into a darkness state that they think that they're awake because, you know, if I could turn the lights off in this place, your eyes will adjust and you can be, start seeing again in the darkness. And you can see, but the thing is, you're still in darkness. But it seems light to you. And that's how Satan likes to put over our eyes that we think we're okay. But we're really not. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the what? The flesh. To fulfill its what? Because the flesh is full of lust, isn't it? People are drunk in the spirit of deception. When you know the time and season, the truth will keep you awake and exposes the deception. So the truth will keep you awake to tell you that's deception. That's deception. That's deception. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. But a lot of people like to say, me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. The doctrine of Satan. Because they love touching evil. You know, the word says that we love sin, don't we? Doesn't the word say that? Because sin is a sport. It's a sport. I remember when I was in the world, I used to... Do you, do anybody remember when they was in the world? Amen. And you say, man, I got to do something. <laughs> I mean, you just got, you don't even know why. You just got to do something. Something what? Sinful. Because the flesh was talking. Flesh was talking. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. We go in the jails, Pastor and I and Vivian, my wife, and Kate, uh, Kate and we uh, go and we minister to the people in, that, in there. And you can see the difference when people are in jail, in a physical jail, and how they want to get free. And I always tell them, man, you could be free in a physical jail just by being free up here. But a lot of people, once they get out of there, they go back and jail up here. Yeah. And forget that the bars are around them, but they're invisible. It's stuff that you can't see. You, you, you got free from the chains, but now you got shackles back on you. But the devil ain't going to let you know he's involved in your everyday life and decisions. You, the devil don't come up to you every morning and say, hi, my name's Satan. This is my plan for you today. He don't do that. 
He slowly sifts you. And he sifts you so well that you can't feel it. And he slowly tries to drain the life of God out of you. And he does it well. And if a person don't have a repentant heart, you'll get a hardened heart. And it cracks. And it gets broken. And now all the things that of anger and bitterness and everything that the word of God tried to speak, it cannot take in. Because it's so stuck on itself and not ready to surrender so that God can fix that heart. It's very vital because Satan, he don't want you to be who you're supposed to be. Because if you wake up and find out who you truly are, you'll be able to take commands from your official officers that God places in front of you. Because you got to understand some God places us in, in position way before y'all came here. And you got to understand the things that we went through, we're trying to avoid you from going through it yourself. I made many mistakes being that total freedom. But the thing is, I never let go. I turned around and surrendered so I can stay in place to, to fulfill the will that my Father placed in me. It's not an easy task. I promise you, it's not easy. But if it was easy, anybody can do it. But I'm not anybody. I was called from the Most High God. I don't walk in the ways of the world anymore. I walk in a different beat, a different standard, a higher standard. If I have to be alone, I'll be alone. So be it. I came here by myself. I came here surrendering and hurt. I don't, I don't forget where I came from. And when I do forget, he spanks me very well. Yeah, God spanks real good. He knows where to spank where nobody else can. <laughs> he knows where to hurt you. <laughs> to make you surrender. Because he loves you. But if you despise it, that means you didn't love him anyhow because you won't allow him to correct you to bring you to the place you need to be. Where we at? 2 Thessalonians 2? And verse 9. It says, this, the coming of one is according to the working of Satan with all powers, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusions. That they should believe the what? The lie. Remember I told you, those who are attached to the truth, the truth will show you that. And so he said, don't touch that. Don't touch that. But we'll touch it anyhow. You know the worst thing about people? People can see a trap and go in it anyhow. And think they're better than the trap. But don't even know that Satan put that trap there because he knows that your pride is going to tell you that. Because he's speaking it to you. Oh, man, you're better than that. You can do that. But when the animals see a trap, what does it do? It avoids it. It goes around. First, it sniffs. <laughs> so there's dangers there. Then look at the object and see what's around it. Us, we'll just walk right into it, blinded because we're asleep. We can't see. Because something else is speaking to us. Because we forgot our father's voice. Because he said, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. Those that his sheep have turned into a wolf. They're wearing sheep clothing, but are wolves trying to kill the body of Christ. Because they believe in their own belief system. And they have a double tongue like a snake. They speak God one way, but the other way, they ain't walking God. So they're more deceived than anybody else. It's like the word said, a blind man leaving another blind to a ditch. Blind man is asleep, more than that sleepwalking. He's sleepwalking, 
and, and people are going to get counsel from him, and he's say, saying you're right to hell. He's your pool, Paul barrier, carrying you right to hell. And don't even, we don't even realize it because they law on us by the deception that they're receiving. That's come as very, very good to take counsel from where you're supposed to get it from and receive it even though you don't like it. Many times I got counsel I didn't like. And then I had to surrender to the Lord so I can keep moving forward. I have to surrender to the Lord, not to myself, but to the Lord. Let's go on. It says, let's go back to 11. It says, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasures and unrighteousness. Now, deception promotes doubt. Doubt rejects and comes against the promise of God's truth. That's what doubt does. It comes against the promises of God's truth. So God's promises in this word, that means that if this, the, the, the deception comes, it's not going to allow you to receive the promise. Then you blame God because you're not receiving what you're supposed to be getting. And God said, that wasn't me you was listening to. You was listening to another voice. I told you what to do. I told you how to walk in obedience. I showed you how to be instructed and be disciplined. Because at Total Freedom, we're taught. I don't know about any other places, but at Total Freedom, we are taught how to walk in obedience. It's, a, it's up to us to choose to do it. Even though somebody else is not walking in it, don't mean that you... You still have the choice to do it for yourself, despite of anybody else. I choose life, not death. I choose life. And life is, you have to fight for life. Just like this country, you have to fight for life. Remember Memorial Day and all the other stuff? People died for our freedom. So we have to die for our freedom and to die for other people's freedom, too. You may as well die now and then they have to die later and have suffering for eternal death, which is a worse judgment. Amen? You're going to die either way. So you die now, you live now. You have life. It says here, I have here, they will carry no truth but unrighteousness. And that will bring a flawed belief system. Because their belief system is flawed. It's not real no more. It's not real to them because they're speaking out of their head, and, but they don't really believe it because it didn't come here. Because they didn't take it to heart. Because we got to take this thing to heart. Because when it comes to heart, it's a heart matter. Now God can operate on it. He can fix it. He, no, no, let's forget about fixing it. He can renew it. Renew it to a better state, a state that you never experienced before. Some of us just are just seeing the iceberg and haven't even touched it yet. Just because you see it don't mean you made it. None of us made it. We're trying, all trying to get home, aren't we? That means we got to be doers and, be, and, and, and walk in this thing because we don't know the day or the time or the hour or the minute or the second that he might be calling us. That, and, and some of us might not see it coming through the clouds. We don't know. Because nothing, the only thing promised in here is death, isn't it? We're all going to die, right? Either you're going to die to yourself, or you're going to die eternally. But we're going to have to die some way. Oh. Now, faith has been cut off. Now let me go back. It says, they will carry no truth but unrighteousness and that will bring a flawed belief system. Now faith has been cut off and belief has been swayed to a delusion that, not, that is not real. And as we say, it brings a wrong vision. So now your vision has been changed to the things what Christ had for you, to the vision of self has for you. 
Because self is just another way of deception to the plans of Satan, isn't it? Because that's what it is. Because the word says, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him, doesn't it? So if you're not denying yourself, then you're in the, another form, not in Christ's form. You became in the form of Satan. Let's go to Romans 16. Hallelujah. Romans 16, verse 17. Yes. It says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offense contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. Hmm. How many of us got a... Now, I know, I'll put it this way. I'm going to put myself in this situation. When I was at Total Freedom, and I had a roommate that wouldn't want to walk in the ways of God. Even though we slept together, it didn't mean we had to eat together. I would stay prayed up for being with my roommate. Man, I had to be prayed up a lot at Total Freedom. Because not everybody came for the same purpose. Not everybody wanted to stick to the, to the plan that God had for them. You got to stay prayed up. You got to stay in this form of surrender. And you can't just take on anybody's thought and behavior how they feel. Because their feelings are a lie. And, if, and even if they bring strife and division, even if they bring it towards you, if God's for you, Oh, you know the scripture, right? <laughs> but we forget it when, when it comes up, don't it? Amen. We forget it because what stole it from you? Deception. Delusion. Because it happened just suddenly. You find it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> That's the problem. I got in the way. Supposed to go, Lord, you see this. What are we going to do about this? What are you going to do about it? Is this suffering for my behalf so that you're trying to show me me? So I can get through this thing to get to the other side? Because when you get, get victory, you learn how victory looks. So you go from glory to glory, faith to faith. But you got to go through some suffering. You have to learn how to endure through it. Because if you run from it all the time, how are you going to get built up? How are you going to allow God build the house? Put the foundation where it's supposed to be at so you can stand on it. So that you can grow. So you, you like a lot of us, we go through this nine-month stage. You go through nine months, you're just in the incubator. You're just getting yourself to come out the womb. You still got to learn how to crawl. Then you got to learn how to walk. Then you have to learn how to run. So you can learn how to fly over your troubles. It takes time. You just can't get it suddenly. Even a pastor got filled with the Holy Spirit and everything else that happened. The cloud came down on him and he got changed and all this stuff. God still had to groom him. He had to go through some stuff. Acts King David. When King David became king of Israel, when he got anointed by Samuel, he didn't become king right away as soon as he got the anointing. He had to go through some stuff, didn't he? Matter of fact, he had the king chasing after him. But he had to learn how to fight, how to stand. And he had to learn how to surrender because David made some mistakes. But those mistakes built him. It showed him that he's just a mere man matched up to God. Just a mere man. We're not God. We can't. God would not be mocked. 
We laugh at God, thinking that God is looking at our sin and think that he ain't going to do nothing, but we don't even know that he's just waiting for the time. His time. His time is different than our timing. He sees things different than we do. We think that God's for us, but he's really not with us if we're walking in sin, if we're not repenting. Hmm. Oh, where are we going at? Where are we at? Verse 17. It says, let's do that again. Now I urge you, brothers, note those who will cause division offense contrary to the doctrine which you learn, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their what? Own belly. And by smooth words. I know somebody got smooth words right now. He runs the White House. Smooth, man. Every time you, you say, well, we ain't got to fight them. We're just talking agreement. I'm like, man, they're coming over here. Matter of fact, they're here. <laughs> oh, we, we're okay. Everything's okay. You think he ain't deceived? All right. <laughs> and flattering speech. We get that in our, our political, don't they? They, man, one thing about the political, man, they know how to lie to us very well. Give us all kinds of promises. And the people still believe them, even though they tricked us over and over again. We're supposed to put our trust and our hope in who? Come on, God. Because we, we are commanded by a different kingdom, aren't we? But like God says, what is Caesar is Caesar's. But what is God is God. Amen? So we're supposed to abide by the laws. But we're also supposed to abide by higher standards. If it comes against God's standards, we're supposed to, uh-uh, I abide by God's standards. Uh, this mixed bathroom stuff, do you think that's deception? Having boys and girls go to the bathroom together? That's chaos, isn't it? That's delusion, isn't it? That's setting up for a failure, isn't it? But to them, what's good is now evil. And what's evil has been now became good. Hmm. And by smooth words and flattering speech, deceives the heart of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning what? Evil. So that means that we need to have discernment. Discernment to know what's good and evil. Isn't that what discernment is? So we can discern, oh, this is not a God. But how are you going to get that if you don't have a relationship with him? How are you going to get that if you're not hearing from him? How are you not going to get that by being obedient to him? Because he said, I give the deep secrets to my sons and daughters. The mysteries. Things that the world can understand. Because a person that's in the soulless room the things of God, it seems foolish to them. Very foolish. Because God don't do things according to how we see things. He's trying to change our seeing. It's like putting on Holy Ghost glasses. Without the frame. <laughs> Without the contact. It's an inner thing from the inside out. So you can see the way that he sees. So you can love the way that he loves. Because we can't love. We lust. But when we have connection with God, it brings love. The true love. Because God is what? Love. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 7. Oh, well, let's, let me finish this. Delusion brings division. It brings criticism. They fight for themselves and search for Someone to believe what they believe. They fight for themselves and try to search for somebody else. Come on, man, you believe in me? You believe in me? Okay, we'll stand together with this belief system. But it's flawed. It's not true. Let's go to Matthew 7. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. 
This is what we do. We teach in the jails. We teachers. Everybody in here should be a teacher. You got to stand up for righteousness. And don't be afraid how they look at you. They're going to give you looks anyhow. So what? They gave me looks in the world. And I still did what I wanted to do. Now I'm doing for Christ. Now I got somebody to back me up. I was called for this. I was called for this. I remember the first time I had to teach at the, and at, the, uh, at the ministry? God set me up. We had a Monday night teaching. I was only two months in the ministry. It was supposed to be big brother teaching. I was the baby. And, God, and Pastor looked around and he said, who's, this is when we had Saturday morning meetings. And he said, who's going to teach today? And all of a sudden I had a yawn and both my hands went up. You tell me that wasn't a setup. <laughs> I didn't know, but God caused it. He'll cause stuff. Try to get your attention. And that's the day, that's the weekend when I saw God in the cloud. Saw the whole body of God down to his waist with his arms out with a book in his hand in the cloud. Freaked me out. Because I'd never seen nothing like that before in my life. And I looked up, we was coming from work, and I looked up, the guy that was driving said, man, Dave, there's a man in the sky. And I looked up, I said, that's God! <laughs> the whole thing, perfect and complete. You couldn't deny it. It was perfect. Never seen nothing like that before in my life. And many other things I can talk about I've seen and have witnessed what God has done that I can't deny him. There ain't no way I can deny that God is not real and alive. Because he made himself real to me. For those who seek after him, he will show himself. The word says, first seek the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. Then all things shall be added to you. But you got to do your part first. Matthew 7. Some, some people, God's not real to them. They think that he's just in the pages. Or they just, he's real to them, but they're lazy. They don't want to do what needs necessary to get to where they need to be at. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter by the narrow gates, for wide is the gates, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate. Now let's stop right there. It says the gate that goes, that's wide, many people are going that way. Excuse me. You got to understand, there's many people going to church that's entering that gate that's wide. Because it's wide and they do what they want to do. They go to church, they go to church to fulfill themselves and they say, well, I went to church. Now, now they make themselves feel like they did something for God. But you got to understand, this is a relationship. Church should be in us. We're supposed to be the church. We're supposed to walk as the church. When we go to our jobs, we're supposed to be a witness to the people Amen. there, not be a one that be a backslider and make them fall and make them think that we're a part of them. Amen. We're not supposed to be a part of this world. Amen. We're supposed to be opposite. And now, I ain't saying to you, you go in and rebuke the world. No, you live the example so they can see Christ in you. Amen. Let your actions show who you are, not what you speak. But how you live, what they see, because you might be the one that signed for the, that person to be saved. But now you're getting fallen away because you don't want, you're afraid to show them the identity Christ called you to be. Now, like, the, my, like my father said, if you're ashamed about me for men, I'm ashamed about you before my father. So when you really want to answer from God, when some all of a sudden, destructions comes into your life. Because God knows how to do stuff, man. God knows how to put a cancer cell into you or something that will bring you to have you turn around to look towards him. 
And then you want to call upon the name of the Lord, and he won't answer you. He'll back away. He'll back away because you know that your heart's not really there for him yet. That don't mean he'll come later. But we want God now, don't we? You don't know God that, you know, God is, God is love. God is love. Yeah, but he's a judge too. You can't have one without the other. God is loving. He's a judge. And he said that we're going to be judging angels. Didn't he say that? We're going to be judging the ones that put suffering in us. So if you don't want to be a witness, don't tell them you're not, you're not Christ, Christ in because you're contaminating the Christian way. You want to be a heathen? Be a heathen then. But don't put Christ in the way of that. Don't try to demolish his name because you don't want to follow him. Say, I'm a heathen, and then walk it. I don't believe in that stuff. Instead of going out there and talking about the name of Jesus and be out there among them and acting foolish. That's that wide road. That's a gate. And many are falling into that gate. Thinking they're walking with Christ and, and Christ is not even there. But God do not dwell with sin. He does not dwell in sin. He dwells in righteousness. Like I said, I might get beat up when I leave here. I don't care. <laughs> Words might be thrown back at me. But that's okay. It's okay. I've been doing this for a while. I got thick skin. I got thick skin. It doesn't bother me no more. I am who I am. And nobody can change that. I'd rather do good for him than be a man pleaser. Can't be a man pleaser. Can't. There wasn't a man pleaser when I was in the world. I was a loner then. Had people around me, but I guess God did that to me because he wanted to be prepared for me for what was next. Do you know what's next in your life yet? That really, do you know what's next? I know he does. I know this guy does too. They're spirits. They can see in your future. One is trying to block your future for you can't get the promises. The other one's trying to open the way so you can get to and receive it. Now, the next verse says that, verse 14, it says, Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to what? Life. And there are few, few who find it. I ask, this, I ask total freedom. Are you going to be the one that's going to be the few? That find it. And when you do find it, will you stay on that narrow road? Because the narrow road, if you look at it in the, back in the biblical times, or even how they had, what they described about this road, the road will only fit one person at a time to walk across it. So you have two or three people gathering together walking across that narrow road, which was a narrow gate to get in. Just like the, the gate that said only a rich man can go through, and only the eye of the camel. But it really was, it was a port that people would go into, and it took one person to go into, into the, get into the city when they could close the gates down, the doors, during the night, nighttime, so they had safety. So it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Amen? Amen. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4. We're going to start at verse 1. Okay. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. 
Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure what? Sound doctrine. But according to their what? Own desires. Because they have what? Itching ears. They will heap up for themselves their own teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the what? Truth. Truth. And be turned aside to what? Fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Endure affliction. You know, anybody saw the passion of Christ? And when, that, and when Jesus took the cross and he hugged it and he laid his head to it and he just, and he said, he, he looked like he loves that cross. He took the affliction for us, didn't he? And he endured it for us. So you should not be bad when somebody does affliction to you and you're doing it and you're walking up rightly for God. Yeah, it ain't supposed to feel good. But at least you know if you're right standing with God, you know that God's just building you up. It's a process. It's, chip, it's chipping away stuff off of you. So you can still love that person even though they're putting a dagger in your back. Sometimes you could tell them, can you push it down more deeper, please? <laughs> if it hurts so good. It hurts so good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to get to that place. And you don't, you know, so what? We surrendered to Christ, didn't we? It's not you that they hate. They hate Christ in you. The Christ. Anybody know what Christ means? The anointing one and the anointing that breaks the yoke of what? Bondage. So you be free. Free. How many like freedom? How many want to stay in freedom? You got to fight for it. Just can't lay it down. Can't lay it down. Because somebody else will pick it up and destroy your freedom. And you know who that is, right? Without adjustment, they will listen to the voice of the stranger. They will listen to fables, lies. And they will also listen to their own desires. Because their own desires will lead you away from God's desires. There's not, you can't listen to two different desires. Either you want to listen to one or the other. You can't listen to both at the same time. That brings a mixed anointing. And it brings confusion, brings chaos, brings division within your own self. A house divided can't stand within your own self. Now you're walking in weariness and stress and have strong delusion over you. And one of the people, when they look at you, wonder if they can see what you're doing because they're looking at you. All of a sudden, fear comes upon you and weariness, doubt, and Unbelief and all the other junk that comes with all the Satanism. Ephesians 5. And then some people don't have a conscience no more. They just won't give a hoot. Because their conscience don't get snared. They don't, they don't feel the presence of God no more. Ephesians 5, verse 1. The word says, Therefore be imitators of God, dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also had loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and aroma. But fornication, uncleanness, and covetousness, let us not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that the fornication, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one, let, everybody say this together. Let no one deceives you with empty words, 
For because of these things, the wrath of God comes against upon the sons of disobedience. For you were once darkened, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what is finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who are asleep. Awake from the what? Dead. And Christ will give you what? Light. You know how you awake when you're in the dead in that kind of state? Repent. Turn from it. Not just repent with your mouth. You got to repent in your heart. To turn from it. Learn to hate that evil. So you don't touch it no more. Ask God. A lot of us don't ask God to take it away from me. Lord, you know I'm weak in this. Please take it from me. So it won't destroy me and kill me. Many times. You got to understand, when I came to total freedom, I came with nothing. And I had to learn to hate the evil that was in me. And it took a process. It took time. I couldn't tell God how to do it. I had to adjust to his timing, to his ways. And I had to learn his lifestyle. Now, you got to understand, I came to total freedom. I saw a pastor with a ponytail and all this stuff in it. All this stuff that he's trying to teach me, I'm looking at him like, man, I don't know this, this stuff. This is different. I don't use a religion. I ain't know nothing about no relationship. I ain't know nothing about have to walk this daily. I ain't know I had to surrender everything to him. No, Lord, you can take this part, but I'm keeping this. And then I had to get spanked to let go of certain things. Certain behaviors, certain ways of thinking, because I didn't take the correction first. Because he was telling me, but I wasn't willing to listen. I wasn't really willing to hear him. Because those are his sheep, hears his voice. And then, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to have older brothers to come and direct me. I had to watch Pastor. And you know, I remember one time he was coming out the house and full of joy. <laughs> I was in the disciples' house, and I looked up and said, How can I get that joy? <laughs> he just looked at me, smiled. <laughs> you know how he gets. <laughs> how do you how can I get that joy? I had to learn how to die. I had to learn how to die so I can get comfortable in death. So I can be joyful. So I can laugh again. A true laugh. Don't have to condemn people, but I can direct people. Amen? Amen. I had to learn that. See then that you walk circumstantially, not as fools, but as Wise, redeeming the what? The time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what is the... Understand, understand, in all things get understanding. What is the will of the Lord? What is the will of the Lord in your life? Get the understanding. What is God's will in your life? What is he trying to get you to, to fulfill? Because he ain't finished with us yet. We're still in the process. His will don't stop until you go home. Not when you feel like you done did what you need necessary. I done did, I done completed what need necessary. Now I'm going to do my will now. God, I need to do this now. Instead of waiting for what 
he's instructing you to do so that he can direct you to how to get to the place that you need to get. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's ways is not a shortcut. He takes you. <laughs> Sometimes you got to go back and come back forward. You don't understand. Because some things we could have missed, and he wants to take us back to it so that we can see it, so we can go forward with it. You don't understand. He does it the way that he sees according, because he's building the house, isn't he? He has the blueprint. He's the, constru- he's the carpenter, isn't he? I would like to see when Jesus was the carpenter in the world, when he was in the world, down here on earth. I guarantee he could build some mighty things. <laughs> to the point, too. <laughs> and verse 18 says, Do not be drunk with the wine in which is dispensation, but be fulfilled with the Spirit, him in spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting, what? Submitting to what? One another. And the Honor, reverence, and respect to God. Honor, reverence, and respect. That's what fear means. Honor, reverence, respect. We got to submit to each other. Even if you like it or not. You got to submit to your authorities. That's God's given plan. I'm sorry God made me authority over y'all. Sometimes I'm sorry he did it too. (laughs) It's not easy. It's not easy when people think they know everything. I don't even know everything. We have to wait on the Lord to find out what needs to be answered and spoken. Some things we just don't know. We have to wait on him so that we can get the the true answer. Amen? God wants you, your personality. That's what he wants. He wants your personality and your character. God wants your personality and character. Carnal can only express evil. The enemy wants to deceive you from truth to wrath. Don't stop growing. Don't stop growing. Don't stop growing. Don't stop growing. growing. Expose darkness in your life, and then you expose darkness in others. When people come into a deception, eventually the wrath of God will come. So follow God's plan so you can stay in his grace. Because grace is God's plan in what? Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Verse 5, very familiar scripture, scripture God gave to me before I came to total freedom. Didn't know how simple the scripture is, but how real and how hard it is. Hmm. Verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Let's go to verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. The length of days is in her right hand and her left hand riches in honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who talk hold of her, take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom found the earth, by understanding he established the heavens, by his knowledge the death were broken up, and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not part depart from your eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. 
Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from when the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hands to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor for he dwells by you for his safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blessed the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but give grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Let's go to Psalms 1. Psalms 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scornful. But delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates days and night. His, he shall be like a tree planted by the river waters that brings forth this fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. That means reward, the reward of God. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the ungodly shall perish. And the last one, let's go to Revelation 22. This is the days of the Lord. Know the time is at hand. The time is at hand. It's right before us. There's a, I, can tell you, I can tell you, if you watch television, you can see the time is at hand. The shows that they got out now are more wicked than they've ever been before. They got a show called Lucifer. Come on now. They try, they're trying to usher him right on in to, to, your, to your living room. The music they got today, it, 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 it's silly. The stuff is silly. We got a land that's full of silliness. People are becoming silly. Man, why are you doing I don't know. Don't even make no sense. Especially in the, in the entertainment arena. They got, they got, they're selling cars, and they ain't got nothing about talking about a car. They got a woman up there being lustful in your eyes. And nobody's seen commercials like that. They talk about the product, but they don't even see the product. You see the, a person in front of there try, trying to delusionize you into the lust factor. It's all over the place. When, by the time, and, and, and the bad thing is, they, they, in prime time, they got commercials with two men kissing or two women kissing, and by the time that you could turn it, it's too late, and your children watching it. And they're making it look like it's a no norm. Because if you can't see the time is at hand, that, that we're at the end times, then you're walking in blindness. You sleep. Because evil has overcome this world so much now that you've got to have Christ in your life. Look at all the killings that's going on. I, I want to speak for my, my neighborhoods. They're killing more today than ever before. It's not safe out there. You gotta have the have the sermon of the Holy Spirit, know when it when it goes certain places, and know there's a safety there by being led by the Holy Spirit. Because eruption is coming everywhere, and they bring chaos into the country. They had a bombing in New York, right near, near where I live at. Just openly, and it just. And it's just becoming a norm now. Violence is becoming a norm. We turn on the TV now, and we see it like it's nothing. We got movies that show violence all the time, so it desensitizes us to the real violence. That's what Satan wanted to do. 
is have you the focus on things so you see so much that you don't feel it no more. So it become numb to you. Oh, but the awake ones, they say, I see that. I'm going to expose that. I'm going to tell my children about that. I'm going to tell other people about that. I'm going to tell you what's behind the scenes. What they're showing you is not really what they're showing you. There's more to what they're showing you. That, if they show you that, that means there's some, some more that's behind it that you don't know about, that they have secretly getting things together to expose it later. And let's go and finish this thing up. Verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit. Every month the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And there shall be no more curse but the throne of God, and the land shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophets of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down and worshipped before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophet, and those who keep the word of the book. Worship God. That means worship God is not just coming in here and worshiping him. Worship God is your lifestyle. How you walk, how you live, how you speak, how you see things, what you're hearing. That's worshiping God. It's a relationship. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prof prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. And I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immorals and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves to practice, to practice, to practice. A lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit of the bride says, come. And let him who hears says, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Freely. Take through life so that the water of life, so it could be springing waters living up into you. So you'd be a fountain that others may want to drink from the wells of Christ in you. In you. Let's get our heart prepared for communion right now. And those who want to bring up their offerings, they can bring them up. <clears throat> 